In the previous set of videos, we described, from an abstract point of view, the properties of some of the more complex data structures which were in use in computer systems and available in many modern programming languages. If you haven't already, it's important you go back and watch those videos first. Under exam conditions, you need to be able to understand how to create, traverse, add data to and remove data from each of these data structures in either procedural programming language or using an object-orientated approach. Although you can learn the theory first, it will make more sense to you if you're able to work through some examples of these data structures while actually implementing them in a program. In this video, we take another look at the following data structures, graphs, both directed and undirected. In this video, we're going to take a look carefully then at how to traverse a graph, which as we know, is an unordered set of data. <coughs> there are two quite different approaches to searching a graph, a depth-first approach and a breadth-first approach. In a depth-first approach, we start at the root of the graph and we follow one of the branches as far as it will go, and then we backtrack and carry down another branch. This is why it's called depth first, as it gives the visual appearance of travelling down a tree as far as we can go, before searching other avenues. In order to have a depth first search, we use a stack data structure. With a breadth first approach, we start at the root node, and we travel or scan to every node that's connected to it. Once we've done that, we then continue scanning from left to right following a similar approach. In this way, visually, it looks like we're searching the graft outwards from left to right and then down through the graph. For this, we use a queue data structure. Let's actually look at some examples of some pseudocode to see how these actually work. OK, so here's our graph, and here's our pseudocode, and here's our empty stack. Remember, a stack is a last in, first out data structure. We push items onto the top of the stack and we pop them off. OK, so let's start. The first thing we do is push the first vertex onto the stack and we mark it as visited. So we've done that. Now we visit the next unvisited vertex to the one on top of the stack. So that's B. And we mark as visited. And we push it onto the stack. Now, at this stage, if there's no vertexes left to visit, we're going to pop off. Well, there are vertexes left to visit. It. We've got C, D and E left. Just like when we were at A, we had both B and C. So we're going to repeat this section again and again and again. And we're going to keep pushing onto the top of the stack. Now, at this point, a question your students will often ask, well, is, is where do I go next? I can see here that I've got three unvisited vertexes, but is there a correct one to visit and mark and push onto the stack? I could go to C, D or E. The simple answer is it doesn't matter. You will end up traversing the graph in a different order. You'll end up visiting all vertexes, but it doesn't actually matter which way we go. The more complex answer is when this pseudocode is actually implemented into real code, it will depend on the actual logic you've programmed as to whether we went this way, this way, or this way. But for your students for simplicity, it actually doesn't matter which way we go, as long as they pick one of the routes. So we're going to go this way down to E. So following our logic, we're going around this loop again and again, and we end up visiting B, and that goes on. We visit E, and that gets pushed on. We keep going down, we visit D, and that goes on. And we go down, and H goes on. Now, at this point, we're at H, and we see there are no vertexes left to visit. We can't go anywhere else from H. So we pop H off the stack. The stack pointer is now pointing here, at D. Now we're at D, we see if there's any unvisited vertexes. And there is. There's one here at C, so we push it onto the stack, and we mark C as visited. Again, we're at C, and we discover we can go to F, and then from F to G. So our stack here is filled up, 
and we're now down here currently at G. At this point, if there's no vertexes left to visit, and there isn't any vertices left to visit, we can see that now, we've visited them all, we just pop off, and we keep end up going around this loop, popping off. So we're going to work our way back around the stack. We're going to be popping off G, then F, then C, then D, then E, then B, then A. Remember, we already popped off H earlier on. So effectively, we're going to travel back around this graph, popping each of these vertices off, as it goes down. We will end up here where the stack is empty and we can be guaranteed that we visit every vertex on the stack. Okay so let's do the same thing now but this time let's use a queue data structure. So here's our pseudocode algorithm for the queue, here's our empty queue which remember has a front of the queue and back of queue pointer and here's our graph. First thing we do is we push the first vertex onto the queue at the start and we mark it as visited. We then repeat this section visiting all vertexes connected to vertex A and we push them onto the queue. So we push B onto the back of the queue and C onto the back of the queue. So we can see here now our back pointer is pointing here, that's the back of the queue, that's where items join the queue and the front of the queue is still pointing to A. We do this until we've visited all vertexes. Well, we can see we've visited both vertexes connected to A. So now we pop a vertex from the queue, and you always pop from the front of the queue. So the front pointer is now pointing to B. We now visit all unvisited vertexes connected to B, and we push them onto the queue. So we're going to push on D, and we're going to push on E, and the back of the queue is now pointing here. We've now visited all vertexes connected to B. So we pop from the front of the queue, and the front of the queue is now pointing at C. We visit all unvisited vertexes connected to C. Well, that's just F now, because D has already been visited. And that gets pushed onto the back of the queue. We've now come to all visited vertexes. So we pop from the queue. So now, the front of the queue is pointing to D. We visit any unvisited vertexes connected to D. Well, the only one left is H, and that gets pushed onto the back of the queue. The back of the queue here is now at H. We've now visited all vertexes connected to D. So we pop. We pop from the front of the queue, and we're now looking at E. We visit any unvisited vertexes connected to E. Well, we can see there aren't any, they've all been visited, so we're already at this stage. We pop from the front of the queue, the front of the queue is now at F. We visit any unvisited vertexes connected to F, that is simply G, and we push that onto the back of the queue. We've now visited all vertexes connected to F. So we pop from the front of the queue and we're now at H. Visit any unvisited vertexes connected to H. Well, there aren't any. We're already at this stage. So we pop from the queue, and we're now pointing at G. Note at this point, both uh, the front and back pointer are pointing at the same location. But we'll carry on seeing the algorithm right through to the end. So, we visit any unvisited vertexes connected to the current vertex, which is G. There aren't any, so we're already at this stage. We now pop the vertex from the front of the queue, so we've popped G off. Finally, we can now see that the queue is empty, and we can guarantee that we visited all vertexes in this graph using this queue data structure.